Blessed John of Parma, Confessor, First Order. John of Parma was the seventh general of the Franciscan order and labored zealously during his administration to reanimate the spirit of the order. He was a descendant of the ancient noble family of the Barali, and he was born at Parma in the year 1209. He was in high repute for learning and piety and was professor of philosophy in his native city. When the love of God urged him to forsake the world and devote himself wholly to God in the order of Friars Minor. At the time, he was 25 years of age. Already during his year of probation, he was imbued with the spirit of our Holy Father, St. Francis. He loved poverty above all things, not only so far as the renunciation of external goods is concerned, but also in the sacrifice of his will and the esteem tendered him, so that he was a model of humility, abnegation, and self-sacrifice. After his profession, he was sent to Paris to complete his course in theology. After he was ordained to the priesthood, his superiors employed him in the apostolic ministry. Then he was appointed professor of theology and acquitted himself of this task with remarkable success at Bologna, Naples, and Rome. Pope Innocent IV convoked a general council in the city of Lyon in the year 1245. As the minister general, Crescentius, was unable to attend the council because of age and infirmity, he deputed Father John to go to the council in his stead. Here John won for himself the admiration of all the prelates of the church by his wisdom, knowledge, and virtue, and the sovereign pontiff gave him his full confidence. Two years later, when the Pope himself presided at the general chapter of the Franciscan order for the election of a general, the Pope pointed out John as the man best qualified for the office. So he was elected Minister General of the Order in 1247. Universal rejoicing reigned among the good religious, especially among the surviving disciples of St. Francis. They trusted that the spirit of poverty and humility would bud forth anew, and they were not disappointed in their hopes. As General of the Order, John visited practically all the convents in the various countries. He always journeyed on foot, clothed in a poor habit, accompanied by only one or two friars. Sometimes it happened that he spent several days in a convent as an unknown guest, and could without trouble observe everything that occurred, occurred before he revealed his identity. Everywhere he set the example of a perfect friar minor and made the best possible provision toward promoting religious perfection. The Pope, who called him an angel of peace, sent him as his legate to Constantinople to bring back the schismatic Greeks to Catholic unity. For two years, John labored at this task with remarkable wisdom and much success. Upon his return, he deemed it best that someone else be appointed to govern the order. This was in the year 1257. Upon the urgent request of his brethren, he named St. Bonaventure as a worthy successor. He it was who completed the work begun by his predecessor. John now withdrew to a hermitage in Greccio, where he spent a life far more angelic than human. One morning, when the server failed to appear for his holy mass, an angel came instead. John had spent 32 years in this solitude when he learned that the Greeks, who had been reconciled with the church, had again relapsed into schism. Although he was then 80 years old, John was eager to undertake the journey to the east in order to restore unity. Pope Nicholas IV gladly assented to the plan. But arriving at Camerino, John felt that his end was near. He himself exclaimed, Here is the place of my rest. He received the last sacraments with great devotion and departed from this life on the 20th of March in the year 1289. 
Numerous miracles occurred at his grave. Even those who had formerly persecuted and calumniated him came to beg his forgiveness. Pope Pius VI beatified him in 1781. Renounce and Endure Even worldly wise heathens recognized with the faint light of reason that the secret of a perfect life is contained in the words, Renounce and Endure. Blessed John of Parma found the source of happiness and holiness in these words. We too must renounce if we wish to be happy and to lead a life that will be pleasing to God. We must renounce the many inclinations that impel us to sensuality, avarice, and the love of honor. By nature, man needs little to satisfy his needs, but cupidity is a glutton that will not be satisfied. If we wish to be happy, then, we must deny ourselves whatever the passions crave for. In order to be a servant of Christ, you must even deny yourself necessary things. Every one of you who does not renounce everything that he possesses cannot be my disciple. Luke 14.33 What progress have you made in renunciation? <clears throat> Just as we must renounce what our interior and inordinate desires crave for, so must we endure whatever occurs externally to cause us vexation, heat and cold, hunger and thirst, fatigue and infirmity, befall us in this earthly life ever since the day of original sin, and we must patiently endure them as universal punishment for sin. No man escapes them. Man, living for a short time, is filled with many miseries. Job 14.1 In his religious life, as well as on his many journeys, Blessed John willingly submitted to innumerable hardships. Should we not then accept the necessary ones with patience? How do you bear them? Consider that while we must suffer from the inclemencies of the seasons and the frailties of our nature, there is much more to endure from the people with whom we come in contact. But such things, too, we must suffer with patience. Others must bear with us. Why should we not have to bear with their frailties? Particularly, we shall have much to endure if we wish to lead others to do what is right. At the same time, we should modestly withdraw if we notice that others are more competent at such work. When Blessed John perceived that another was better able than he to conclude happily what he had begun, he withdrew and confined himself to ceaseless prayer that God's blessing might rest upon the labors of his successor. Nor was this blessing wanting. The patient man is better than the valiant, and he who rules the spirit than he who takes cities. Proverbs 16.32 Prayer of the Church O God, who, in order to promote the honor of thy name, didst bestow upon blessed John invincible strength of soul, Grant that we may merit the assistance of thy almighty hand in attaining to the triumph of heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed John of Parma, pray for us.